Have you ever thought about building your own 12 volt solar system? In today's video, I will show you how to build the simplest solar system possible. Stay tuned to learn more. In today's video, we are building a small 12 volt DC solar system that consists of three main components, namely solar modules, the charger and batteries. I will show you how these components work, how to connect them, and we will also run an appliance or two off the solar system. Today we are just building a 12 volt system, so I can use a 12 volt deep cycle battery. And I will be using this OmniPower 60 amp hour battery. The next component in our system is our solar panels. I'm using a 90 watt solar panel. 90 watt solar panel can produce about 90 watts of electricity or energy in um, an hour. Our third major component in the system is our charge controller. There are two major types of technologies on the market, PWM and MPPT. Also for sake of simplicity, just know a PWM is your entry level charge controller. It is less expensive than MPPTs and it works well in 12 volt systems for camping, boating or off grid living. Those are the three major components in a basic solar system. The other components you need to build the system is some solar cabling and fuses and breakers. First step is to um, get a piece of wood that you can mount your components on. I'm using a Victron Energy 30 amp PWM charger. The terminals to connect your wiring is at the bottom here and you just follow the instructions. As you can see the first positive and negative is for solar panels. The next one is for um, battery and the last one is for, it's got a little globe, that's for your 12 volt DC appliance. So I'll mount this to the board. General rule, always connect battery first, then solar array. In this charger's instruction manual, they recommend six millimeter cable. That is definitely enough to carry 30 amps. This panel produces about five or six amps at uh, maximum output. So I'm, sa I'm very safe within the limits. First step will be to um, connect these to my solar charger. Uh, just follow the little diagram on the charger. On my battery, I'm gonna connect the negative over here to the negative of the battery. Um, it is extremely important your lug sits flush on the battery so that there's no electricity leaking. And it's important to make sure that this little bolt is very tight. And there, it's tight. Next up, I will connect my positive cable. It's important to note that if this cable touches this terminal, you will see a little spark. Okay, as soon as I've done that, you can, the light will go on. So this is a um, 12 volt lead acid battery. It is a sealed battery. That means you don't have to add battery water to it like um, you get other batteries on the market which are 12 volt flooded battery. It is important to set your charge controller to the type of battery that you're using. The main thing you wanna do is to make sure that your charger is matched with the type of battery that you have. Because um, this sets the voltage cutoff points, you know, where the um, charger will charge to and where it will cut off the load when the battery gets empty. The battery lifetime is measured in cycles. If a battery is fully charged, discharged and charged, that equates to one cycle. The battery I'm using today can do approximately 2250 cycles at a 50% depth of discharge or DOD. So basically what this means is you can't take a battery from 100% to zero and back to 100 that would be 100% depth of discharge. It is important to only discharge a battery 50% and back to full. If you do that, you maximize the lifetime of this battery. It is recommended that lead acid batteries only discharge to 50%. At above about 12.6%, your battery is fully charged, 100%. At about 12 volts, your battery is 50% charged. So you want your charger to charge your battery up to the full capacity of 100% and then while you are using the battery you want your charger to cut off the loads at about 
DOD or depth of discharge. This equates to about 12 volts. So it is important to set the voltage in a charge controller for the type of battery you have. If you let your battery run down to about 10 volts, it would, might never fully recover again and you shorten the lifetime dramatically. Do a bit more research on depth of discharge and how cycles work and on batteries before you buy them. Because as I said, it is the most expensive part of the system. As you can see, solar panels have special connectors. These are called MC4 connectors. They are the standard in the solar industry and you will find them on almost all panels. You want to buy a cable that has got MC4 connectors on the one side and stripped cable on the other side. This will link your solar panels to your charge controller. It is, a, it is very important to keep cable runs as short as possible. If you're camping and you're planning to put your solar panels 20 or 30 meters away from your charger, you need to know that there is DC voltage loss on your cable runs. So this means if you use a thin cable, the voltage coming into the charger won't be the same as the voltage generated by the panel because voltage is getting lost along the way. You get voltage calculators online. We've got one on our website as well at solarschool.co.za and you can just see the voltage drop impact on your cable run. It's quite easy, your positive from your solar array has a connection like this. And then this MC4 connector just clicks into extension cable. I will then connect to my charger. I've connected my positive MC4 connectors, but I haven't connected the negative side. So as soon as I connect this, the circuit is complete. Okay, the solar is now securely connected. So you've connected your battery first, then your solar panels. And now we are gonna connect a load to the system to see if the system works. Um, I've put the panel in the sun and now you can see this light is flickering, meaning that there is power coming in from the sun, charging the battery. These are my, is my positive and my negative of my solar panel connection. Here is the positive and negative of my battery connection. And then lastly, this is where I will connect the load. I've attached my light fitting over here. And then I'm gonna connect my light fitting to the charger. I'm gonna connect my bulb. This is a 12 volt DC bulb. You cannot connect 110 or 220 AC load to this charge controller. For that you need an inverter and that will be in my next video when we build a solar system that can run 220 volt AC power or 110 volt if you are in America. And I've set the charge controller now so that I can control my load output by pressing this button. Next I want to talk about system safety using fuses and breakers. It's best practice to put a fuse or a breaker um, on each cable run to ensure that if there's a short circuit or something goes wrong, the fuse blows instead of the um, cable actually heating up and causing a fire. The risk is pretty low in a small system like this, but still it is best practice and I do recommend that you, that you put fuses and breakers into your system. On the solar array circuit, it's pretty simple. It's an inline MC4 fuse. So this is just a small 16 amp fuse that goes in between my um, MC4 connections. I've taken the MC4s apart again and I just put this fuse in between here. So now I have a fuse on my positive cable of the solar array. As you can see here, I've put a fuse holder in on the positive of the battery. And I'm gonna put a 16 amp fuse in there. And then I'm putting a 10 amp breaker for my DC loads. The positive wire now has a fuse here, so it's not closed yet. If I close it, it will connect the circuit. So again, battery connecting first. Okay, I've got power on my charger. Next is the panel. If your panels are outside or mounted on a roof, 
it's important to um, cover them with a blanket so that they don't produce power if you're going to be wiring. And then you can just remove the blanket after you've done all your wiring. And also make sure that the MC4s are not connected. You don't want to work with a live circuit. And remember, the sun is shining on the panel. The circuit is producing energy. Now I can connect my solar panels. Then I should get power again coming in from the solar panel. If you can see, everything's working again. I've got a fuse on my um, solar circuit. I've got a fuse protecting my battery circuit. And I've got a breaker on my DC load circuit. So this uh, solar system is safe now. In the description, I will put a link to the um, cable gauge guide as well as the fuse and breaker guide to make sure that you use the right cable gauge and fuse in your solar system. That's it for today. And remember, not all solar components are compatible with each other. Always do your research, read the spec sheets and manuals, and ask for advice if you're not sure about what you're doing. We are currently making more videos about solar which will be online soon. Hit the subscribe button and ring the bell and you will be notified of our next video. You can also find out more about solar on solarschool.co.za.